Hello everyone, in this video we will be looking at the Snap G and see how it holds up to the competition. Here is a quick unboxing video of the Snap G with full accessories. Here is my backer card from the Indiegogo campaign. All the boxes you see here had no shipping damage whatsoever during the transport. All the items here were in good functioning order at the start of this video. Here is what the case looks like with all the items unpacked. Here is the Snap G, the dual battery charger, the extra battery. The other battery is inside the Snap G. The external microphone that is also adjustable the backpack mount, the screwdriver that is provided by Thinkware for the backpack mount, a mini tripod provided, the wind muff for the external microphone, two USB Type-C cables, ferrite cores, here is the lanyard you can put around your wrist, here is the inserts for your tripod, quarter inch. If you want to pop the battery out, you have to first press this push button. It won't let you, it does have some on the side here. It won't let you release until you hit the push button. And then it comes out. You insert your battery and then you put it back in. And then when you're ready, you turn it on. It does have that quick mode option again. This is your record button. This is your light indicator. It will let you know if it's recording or charging with the power bank. This is your trigger. You can move this around. Here's your screen. If you press the button twice, it goes from video to photo and vice versa. Uh, gimbal up here. Camera works really well. 4K. Spins nicely. And the soft bag. When you first use the backpack mount, you have to remove this gel-like material from the Snap G. It will not let you apply the backpack mount to screw it in without the removal of the material first. Setting up the backpack mount. Here's an example of a strap. Here's how to put it on.
And if you're wondering, if you don't buy the full pack of the Snap G, but you want to use a similar backpack mount for on your person, would something like cable ties work for this as a cheap alternative? So allow me to show you. I have here uh, eight inch releasable cable ties. Uh, found this at a local Home Depot. And you could, in theory, put it around here but you run the risk of interfering with the microphone hold, which is right here. That's where you put in your external microphones. So the other problem too is you would also be touching on the trigger and that's what helps uh, stabilizing your footage, resetting the position. Here is some documentation provided by Thinkware for the Snap G. It explains how the trigger works, the video setting values, the different mode types of the Snap G, and the specifications related to the camera itself. Here are my results from testing the battery in an indoor setting while the Snap G was on the tripod. The minutes recording section is referring to the average time before the Snap G battery died. The plus or minus two minutes is referring to when I retested the battery and I was able to get more or less minutes on the next recording attempt. So now I'd like to show you that this does in fact work off a power bank uh, with the battery in and actually runs a lot cooler. Uh, so here on the side is the memory card slot. This is where you can put in the memory card and the USB-C. So you can plug it in. The green light shows that it is charging right here. And up here, you can see that there's a charge arrow for it. So now you could be able to leave it on a tripod here, just like this, or a different tripod. And it will function off the battery pack, so you don't have to burn the battery within this. And when it does overheat, you'll, you'll find that in this area is the source of the heat. The battery itself right here actually maintains the, the heat pretty well, so it's not gonna overheat in this area. It actually overheats up here. Here are the settings within the Snap G. This is where you can set up the live stream setting. This is to set up date and time plus the LCD screen timer. The record settings mainly for your output and face ID. The system info for the firmware and language settings. The icons here represent different settings. This one is specifically for live stream. This one zooms in on your screen separate from the camera. This one is your brightness setting. There is no number display of its level though. Here is to turn off the beep noises of the Snap G. Here is the gimbal settings. You can adjust the speed of the gimbal here, the sensitivity of how it turns, a welcome mode, and calibration setup. Here is what it looks like to set up the first time. The main problems I've had with this camera are the following. Number one, when you use the quick shot on the camera and you try to open the video that you just recorded, it crashes the Snap G into a unresponsive state. The second problem I've noticed with the Snap G is when I try to press the record button, there are times where it does not register my input. My third problem with the Snap G is the battery. Based on the recording times, it is very deceptive how accurate the recording is on the Snap G. I feel like there is more recording possibility, but it's dependent on the firmware updates. Here are some examples I took with the Snap G at night. First video is at 1080 30 frames per second, 4K 30 frames per second. SNV Linear 4K 15 frames per second. SNV Wide 4K 15 frames per second.
My overall grade on the Snap G with full pack accessories using the launch firmware is AC. At this point in time, the DJI Pocket 2 still outclasses the Snap G, but since there is no activation requirements on the Snap G, I believe firmware updates later in time will make the Snap G a competitor. The accessories help the Snap G's overall presentation, but the launch firmware really drags the grade down from what could have been a B tier camera and accessories at launch to a C tier camera with accessories. Please let me know in the comments what you thought about the Snap G, and thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.